welcome uh, yeah. <laughs> to a midday soap opera time slot of getting soapy, juicy. What would uh, I don't know, this? but I don't Maybe know. But no, nobody would know that except for us because they're listening to it anytime they want. But yeah, we're hopping all over the place the past uh, few weeks, you know, getting juicy in the morning when we record, getting juicy in the evening, getting even juicy in the midday. I know. Um, you know, our juice, our, our, our juice drive is just nonstop. It can keep Ooh. going and going and going and going. It's like, like I think those sex toy companies are going to get a run for their money. Yes, I think so too. And absolutely. Oh, and I hope that your internet's working because it's a little bleepy. Mine's working just fine. I don't have any okay. interference on my end. Okay, good. I know this This is how we, this is our jam, right? We just shoot the shit and we're like, hey, your, your fucking sound sucks. Or hey, you're... <laughs> yeah, don't use Amazon hey. to make all your purchases for your technology and all of your needs for podcasting. <laughs> well, oh God, womp womp. Okay, we could, that could be a whole other episode. By the way, sponsor us, Rhodes. Yes, please, Ro, would be great. Please, we will give you so much kosher delight, you won't have any idea what hit you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Speaking of not knowing what will hit us, actually, it's a really good segue into our guest today. It's a great segue. Yeah. So we on our show today have the Alice Star zooming in from, I believe, Toronto, Okay. I, I, I don't, I know it's Ontario, at least back in that, that Eastern way of Canada, um, momentarily here. And Alice is, okay. She, she coins this. So we'll have to ask her about this, but she says she is Canada's only, now that's, that's a pretty big word, only drag wrestler. So amazing. How cool. So freaking Cool. I can't wait to ask yeah. Alice what her foray into that culture was like, whether if she had done other forms of expression through drag uh, performance or if wrestling and drag were kind of a pairing that would be very unique and individual. Oh, yeah. I'm stoked, like super stoked. Um, definitely a first on the show. So, you know, we're not like, I w- I'll just say it because I know Hero very well. Uh, we're not big into wrestling I have I've never have been I can appreciate it and actually I'll have to tell all Alice about my my only like live experience with kind of like hometown wrestlers which I'll, I'll tell after when we talk to her but yeah have you had experience I, I've definitely wrestled with lots of men <laughs> so I mean I've been very satisfied and I think wrestling with men is extremely super hot I would do it as much as I could if I had the ability to Okay, now this is the thing. Now, does she wrestle? Who does she wrestle? That's also what I was thinking as I said that. We have no idea who no. Alice wrestles. For all we know that Alice could wrestle chipmunks and squirrels. Well, exactly. Or like a Canadian moose or... Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yes. It would be, be called like the antler games or something. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Antlers, I think more of like deer. But yeah, I guess that's of course. That's true. I was just, I'm just, mere, meese, moosey, moosey, meesey. I was just looking at her um, Instagram again, but yeah, yeah. Canada's only drag queen wrestler. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That would be such a fun challenge for like a season three of Drag Race Canada for, um, for them to have a wrestling challenge and Alice to be the person on the challenge for that to assess them. Yes. And if Alice ever, like, I know, Oh, let's not even get into the fucking crazy COVID nuttiness because we got new restrictions placed on our province again today. British Columbia, maybe Hero. I don't know if you've even heard them. Came up. Oh, I read them a few few minutes ago. I read them. About. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, no tea, no shade, but about fucking time. Sorry. I mean, people continue to be so irresponsible. Well, yes and no. I don't know. And the reason why I just said that is because. I didn't really want to necessarily get into that whole debacle, but it was more just, I I look forward to the time where our guests, even like Alice, that we can meet them in person, you know, travel a bit more. I was like, oh, I wonder if she ever does like, like tours, wrestling tours. I mean, that would be really cool. I'd love to see her maybe in Vancouver or something like that, but. I would love that. I 
I'm so with you about having connections with people that we speak with virtually and having the ability to be in person with them. That just gives such an even more layer of candidness and um, freedom of speech. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, people, we, I mean, you might be watching this soon, this episode, you might be watching this in 2022. Uh, hopefully as we go through and keep building our podcast, maybe you'll watch it in 2025. <laughs> but my point is that we right now currently are coming up to the holiday season right in the midst. Actually, today is December 21st, which um, I don't like the winter, as I've said before, but I do love today because what does it mean? It's the oh, shortest, it's the shortest day. day of the year. How did I not realize that? And I knew that. Yes. Yeah. I'm so still. Exactly. Happy, hol- oh, wait. happy holidays. Happy holidays. I I was gonna ask you about to see your sweater. I love it. I love it. That's that's uh don't tell me that's Zelda? No. Yes, yes, Yay! yes, it is Zelda. It is, but this is Link. Link is the main <laughs> character, but it's from the old the oh, okay. Zelda. So yes. is it Link? It's Link. Link is the oh, protagonist good. in all the Zelda games, yeah. Yeah, yeah, see, look, I'm getting so pumped for Alice. Look at this. Bam, oh my bam, god, bam, look bam. at that. Oh my god, I should just like try mine and I'll just be like, it'll like come up with like, just like. <laughs> you know what this is? It's it's interesting because now we'll talk to, this is all on the same wavelength, people, okay? Now, now I'm getting into like different types of um, physical exercise and different routines and things like that. Um, but the what I think is, okay, like I didn't realize I started to do some, of those kind of dance cardio videos. And I think you know that, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can see now that I have my my office set up finally, and I've been doing some exercise in this office, there's a window and I see my reflection when it gets later at night, right? And I was like, as I was doing these these dance things, I was seeing my reflection, I'm like, fuck you are, I am so stiff. Like I always thought I was a little bit more graceful but I am so stiff and I really do think it's not because like you see, you're like, oh yeah, look at that muscle. I think this is stress. Uh-huh. It's not, it's all like in my shoulders. Like it looks like I have this like strong neck, but it's like, it's all tension. It's rock hard. So mm. yeah, the kind of rock so that's hard not, that no, not that, not the kind we want. No. Absolutely not. But, um, what kind of physical activity? Okay, I'm walking right into this. But <laughs> what kind of physical activity have you been doing lately? <laughs> oh, I've been very, very Absolutely. nice and gentle with my body. I've been going on long, sensual walks through the city. I've been very gracefully and lazily stretching out on my <laughs> yoga mat. And I've been also very nicely stretching out on my bed as well. So I think, with the, and my thumbs have been giving a good workout thanks to gaming on my Nintendo Switch and the joysticks and all the buttons that are being pressed and I've also been pacing back and forth on the sales floor when I'm working and lifting lightweight objects like hangers and pieces of clothing and boxes of product and getting a great laborious workout from that as well there were so many innuendos in there and I just I love the eye the eye flutter (laughs) me so innocent huh um Wow. Yeah. Bring. Uh, joystick. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know where you were going with, with the thumbs and the, all that kind of stuff, but it was good. It was good. You got I'm very you got dex- a- I'd be a, I'd be a great wrestler. I'm very dexterous. I'm very hands-on and very kinesthetic. Yeah. I like to see, oh my God. Can you imagine us in the ring? Like the juicy, no, in the what do you say? The co- whatever corner. <laughs> Your juicy duo. I come out on the like, platform my... and like major, major platform heels and wedges and stuff and like totally twist my ankle on the first step. Yeah, and exactly. Come out and Our move is like, like, go ahead. Yeah. What would I come out as? I, w- I would, I would, t- I would call it the rinder. What? Well, I thought how you were going to say. How you Okay, well, I, like I, the juicy duo. I thought you were gonna say um, the the rosicado. That was from like way early in the episodes. Oh, the rose with avocado. avocado. Yes, I. Yes, that would be perfect. Actually, you gotta like take your avocado and you like throw out all the pits, and then it, it causes that like a they can't like keep their footing. 
can you can you carry me because I could I could be dressed in a big avocado uniform but basically I would just be a ball so you'd have to like <laughs> pick me up in the uniform and just throw me <laughs> that would be hilarious and then you could have um like bottles of rosé and they can be like 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 sparkly rosé and they can just like completely haze the entire ring like the entire ring and all of the people that yeah. are on it it gets sweet and sticky and fatty and slippery oof Ooh, I just took off my socks because I was getting hot. On I'm serious, actually. Did my you? wool socks. Really? Yeah, I did. I'm, I'm Look, keeping see? my I'm keeping my slip my wool slippers on. Shout I'm, out to Vessi. Shout out to Vessi and their new Sunday slipper, by the way. Hello. Okay. Oh, I like those. Oh god, we are so all over the place. It's the right amazing thing. Although- this is this is this is the hero Rachel, Rachel hero dynamic. I know, absolutely. But Still keeping it to the topic. Alice will be here any second, any second. Yes, she will. Burst into the scene. And mm-hmm. I, yeah. So anyway, no, back to the getting, the getting juicy. Um, what would our signature move be? Oof, oof. I think it would be like the, um, I don't know. Something to do, something to do with citrus. Something to do with like where it would get someone in the eyes mm. and it would make them unable to see. Something oh. that would blur their vision. So maybe like the, we could like call that. it like the, um, I don't know. I like I'm, thinking of cle- I'm thinking of like, I'm thinking of like, um, what's it called? Um, like cleaning no products and stuff. What? Like squeeze them with Lysol? <laughs> Hi, Alice. We can probably, you could probably hear us, but we can't see you yet. Yes. Or not yet, but I soon. I love Very it. Very soon. I love it. Oh, and she's saying, ah, just, just changing, changing, the settings. changing the settings. All good. All good. All good. That and you know what? Good. That's why we do post editing. I mean, I yes, do. Indeed. What am I saying? We. Hero does nothing. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. How dare you? How dare you? I mean, I, what, did I, what did I sign myself up for? But I think as a, as a super move, I think it would have to be something relating to like cleaning products. Something that where it's like very highly disinfecting and like killing and like getting rid of germs and viruses so, well, because it's an opponent you want to get rid of them right so I'm thinking like against an enemy okay and then you know what I started to think of because as I'm very open about my health anxiety and Jews are like pretty like how like hypochondriacs yeah <laughs> so yeah they like, can be oh that's pretty funny I like that yeah like, I, maybe how- maybe it'd be like go ahead I was gonna say bring Howie Mandel into the ring Howie Mandel is like Bubble Boy. <laughs> yes, I like, Alice would probably listening be... to all of us being like, "What maybe? the fuck?" <laughs> maybe you can hear me <laughs> now. We can hear you. Yeah, amazing. I'm gonna. I don't know what's with this. I don't know. If, yeah, look at this camera. Look at this. Oh, it's following Ooh. you. Oh, I love oh, it. Yeah. That. That's you very do that. Cool. Oh wait, wait, wait. It's so crazy. It's... Like we spent how long on Zoom and and Google Hangouts for for how long now and like. I don't know. I still, I'm still learning all this. Oh, it's all good. All it's all good. good. My and I'm God, remo- you look beautiful. Oh look, my I'm God, remo- thank you so I'm much. Removing- there we go. I was going to remove your other identity, but then it, yep. it's gone. So that's great. Awesome. All right, so, let's set this you up. You look amazing. Okay. Oh my God, thank no you so much. No kidding. So thank amazing. you for changing the time for me. No problem. It's- we are happy to. You know what? You you hit us at like the perfect. It was just one of those times that just worked. Otherwise, <laughs> it's it all was meant good. To be. And it was, it was totally meant to be. Absolutely. And I always like to let guests know right off the bat. And we're already recording, as you probably could see already. We like to banter just before our guests come on, so we like come out pretty hot. Okay. <laughs> and then, and um, just so that you know, though, so that you're not like, oh, shit. So pretty much anything you say now sticks. No, sh- Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> mm. Now I got to really think about my words. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hey, can but- we swear? I didn't ask that yes. beforehand. Yes, yeah, so you can you could say uh, whatever the fuck you want. Fuck yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no censorship whatsoever. The, the more juicy, the better. Ooh, okay. 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 Let me get love- warmed up. Yes. Yeah, I let's throw it. down. <laughs> oh, see, we're already using these words. So we were, so we already did like a little, a little intro to you. We were talking mostly about just okay. similar, some, some kind of topics about 
wrestling we're not in that realm be totally Ooh, honest with you like okay. it's not yeah so we're we're virgins when it comes to this whole um realm of what you do yeah is, so everything's new but everything's new but I don't know if you kind of heard us a little bit talking about what we were thinking about like what our identity would be on the wrestling Ooh, okay well, I want to hear, hear this well hero go ahead <laughs> I think Hero's a little behind. Is he here? No, my mic keeps cutting in and out, and it's so bizarre because it says oh. my internet connection is unstable, but it's not though. So like, I can turn it on and off really quickly, my internet, and like just quickly and see if it helps. I just don't know if it'll cut me from the meeting. That's what I'm concerned about. Why don't you just? Why don't you just unplug your mic? Okay. <laughs> this is me being. This is me being. Yeah, we don't need you anymore. Person. See you later. Yeah. No, but uh, like get if rid you, of it. But sometimes with these like external microphones, they're just, they just fuck everything up. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. But, That's okay. I already yeah. had technical difficulties too. So we're off to a good yeah, start. But... <laughs> to a That's all start. good. This is how we roll. This is how we roll. All Actually, right. I want to hear more about this identities. I don't want to take over the interview, but I'm really excited to hear. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, I would definitely say in terms of, we were kind of thinking if we were like a two on two kind of group, like me and Rachel yeah. coming in us like the juicy tag duo, team, kind of like that. And so for me, it's funny. Cause I think about my, I haven't done drag before, but I've always had drag ideas and stuff that I might never act on. And so because of <laughs> you being Jewish and stuff, I thought it'd be fun to have a drag name called kosher pickle. Oh my God. Yeah. So campy and over the please. top. I could be totally like Let's a camp for a night at least. Yeah. So I think that would be funny. <laughs> like if I came in as kosher pickle and then Rachel could find, you know, her drag name and then it would still be like the getting juicy duo, but we would have <laughs> her own drag personas and then that too would be hilarious. That's amazing. Yeah. But, yeah I want to see that. Oh my God. It'd be hilarious. But then even the, like he was talking about just, I mean, we make fun of ourselves all the time is, you know, a lot of, a lot of Jews, including myself, are, I'm like a hypochondriac. So it's like, okay, okay well, we, what, what would our like signature move be? Would it be like bringing, bringing the, um, what did you say? Like the cleaning supplies and like squirting the people cleaning in the eyes supplies. with shit that's just going to blind them. Like, I don't know, something like that. But anyway, it's so all about us. you guys would us. be bad guys. You guys would be bad yeah, guys. Maybe. Right? Okay. I would be a shady, Fun, salty right? bitch. I'd be a very briny bitch. <laughs> now so you guys gotta, actually, you could come down and you could start spraying the place and go, oh, this is just the dirtiest town I've ever seen. You guys are the <laughs> dirtiest audience. You know, something like it. that, right? Yes, yeah. yes. You know what, that's a and perfect then, and segue. Then you, and then hand out pickles. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you were good yes. guys though, maybe, maybe bad guys shouldn't hand out pickles. Yeah, uh, the, the worst uh, worst freebie that I've ever seen. Um, I was uh, at a wrestling event one time, and this guy I, I won't name him because he's still active. Um, but he came out, and he was a he was trying to get the crowd on his side. But by doing that, he thought it would be a good idea to throw out supplements, like just pills. Oh. And uh, there's like kids in the audience and stuff. Like, what kind of good guy just throws out supplements? I know everybody wants to be big and strong, but come on, really. So I thought that was the most outrageous thing and pickles would be way better. Like he should have thrown pickles. Yeah. He should have thrown anything, even you know, carrots. Those were hurt, but. Yeah. Or you know what? If we were bad, we just, we're just going to smack people in the face with the pickles. Yeah. With the carrots. Instead. Or, yeah. Or the pickle. Yeah. So like the <laughs> yeah. ref, you know, one of you could distract the referee, which happens a lot. And then the other, you know, other person will just take the pickle and gouge the eye. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And when you pin them down, the big foot comes up and like, I see one it's like throbbing and <laughs> two when it's throbbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. This, That's amazing. Okay. This is like a segue into you, Alice. And yes. Ari, okay. Explain to us who is Alice Starr? Because then therefore, are you good or are you bad? Give us a little intro as to who you are. Yeah, that's a great question. So Alice Starr is always evolving. Um, I'm okay. always evolving. So, you know, of course, I'm a, a drag queen in the pro wrestling world. That in and itself is unique because there really is nobody else that's doing what I'm doing. There's a couple of people in the United States that, um, you know, will do it like once a year or it'll be a special gimmick. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, when you see drag or cross-dressing or, you know, whatever term you want to, to use, um, it's often used as a, as a comedy tool, right? Mm -hmm. 
where, you know, the big, you know, there's a guy and there's a stipulation. If he loses the match, then he's got to wear uh, a, a dress for, for a month or, or something like that. Right. Right. And so for me, Alice is my personality coming out through drag and how I want it wrestling to kind of what direction I want it to go in. And that's why like, I'm always evolving. Alice is this kind of uh, playful, but at the same time, um, you know, I take everything that I do super seriously. That, that means my drag, that means my wrestling. Um, I'm training all the time, um, you know, at any given time, it's sometimes five times a week. And this is, yeah. Wow. And, and we are, you know, I'm, I've, I've trained in jujitsu, uh, judo, boxing, all these real fighting. Well, wrestling is real. Uh, people that say wrestling isn't real are, uh, it's just, it's just not true because there's nothing fake about being lifted six feet in the air and body slammed. Absolutely. So yeah. Alice in a lot of ways is, um, is, is the things that I have been missing in wrestling since I was a kid that I haven't seen. Um, and at the end of the day, it's just something fun to watch uh, while showing you something new. Um, mm. So so that's Alice in a nutshell. I love that. I love that too. And, and for just, you, sorry, ahead, sorry. And you, this is me and Rachel, we love to talk over each other. That's <laughs> what Jews do. Um, are, were you um, performing drag prior to being in the realm of wrestling or did you no. start wrestling and then got inspired by drag and then combined them? Like what was the Yeah, exactly. That? Yeah, it's the latter. So for me, drag is something that I've always uh, loved. When I was a kid, um, what actually got me into drag, at least I'll be just a little bit, um, it was the movie Party Monster. I don't know if you guys yes. have ever seen that. Macaulay Culkin. It's Macaulay Culkin oh, and uh, Seth Green, I think it was. I haven't seen that and, in ages. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And what's funny is I've actually never seen it. Um, oh. <laughs> I just remember seeing the cover and being so kind of uncomfortable about it. And it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of an uncomfortable movie because uh, it's about murder and all this different stuff. But just seeing the face paint and, and, and honestly, I think the reason why I was so attracted is because I'm afraid of clowns, which is so ironic. Uh, uh, yeah. um, and so uh. I think the, the bright colors, the face paint, all those types of things that make up uh, really got me into drag. And mm. I, it, I was a wrestling fan around that time, but I really didn't put two and two together. Uh, when I started training for wrestling, I knew that if I went out as myself, people, you know, there's a million people that look like me. Uh, but if I came out and came out like this with a huge, massive coat and come in, I usually walk out to Dancing Queen and yes. these by ABBA, these types of things. Yeah, I'm combining two different loves of mine into one and doing something new and different. Yeah. And yes. I just thought it was the perfect opportunity. So before I debuted, I made sure that, um, you know, I really thought about what I wanted to do in drag because I want the drag to be just as serious as wrestling. And I want wrestling just to be serious as drag to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so for me, uh, it was, it was amazing to actually bring those two together, but I was definitely a, a fan of both things simultaneously, but I never really thought to combine it until recently. Okay. But you're, you're representing a whole beautiful, unique niche that, like you said, hasn't really been tapped in too much. And right. in, in a world that I'm just going to say, like, is predominantly male dominated, right? Mm -hmm. And we've had guests on the show before, um, specifically, was it Brock, Brock McGillis, who came out um, as gay, like, he was a pro hockey player, but I'm just thinking wow, of, like, okay. yeah. of like, the, the stereotypes are just the... Um, that kind of realm that culture yeah, yeah the culture and so how did were you accepted right away like how did how did you fit I'm curious like it's yeah really cool, so but... it, yes and no so mm -hmm. amongst my like immediate peers uh people were pretty receptive to it now this is also because the first time I debuted it it was alongside people that I know they didn't know I was doing it really maybe one or two people knew and uh, it's a funny story because I walk into the locker room and people are just looking at me and it's the, it's the male locker room and walk in, they're staring at me and nobody knows who it is mm. until someone clued in was like, Oh my God. And then the place erupted. Right. Cause nobody wow. had seen me in it before. And then uh, I just start getting my stuff on and I look over to the, uh, the, the door and there's a crowd of people looking in now. And I was wow. like, Oh wow, this is so <laughs> cool. 
Uh, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted people to look at me and remember me. Um, and so initially, yeah, the, the reception was pretty good. There were a few people here and there that was kind of weird. They were kind of weirded out. Yeah, I mean, bringing this feminine character to the hyper-masculine world of wrestling is, is a really tough hill. And I, I don't claim to be a, a, a you know, a spokesman or, or a figurehead or a martyr or anything like that. I'm just doing what I love. You're just doing you. Uh, yeah, I'm just doing my thing. But the thing is, is that there were there were there were definitely moments at at certain shows where, or even not getting booked because of of the gimmick, um, and people were not quite ready for it. So I got a lot of comments like, um, literally that, like, I don't think my audience is ready for it, which yes. doesn't really make sense to me. Um, someone said, uh, I want to keep my show family friendly which uh was was Ugh. really hurtful because i thought okay i wear more clothes than the men and the women combined yeah i don't have yeah. to walk down That's shake my true. ass and all that kind of stuff no <sighs> what are you really trying to say um but then again in that same story i went to the person and i told him uh how i i i thought his comments were um inappropriate and and i wanted to have a conversation with them and i did and he's booked me since and I've wrestled with him and he's an amazing guy and he was an amazing guy before and after, but it's that education aspect that becomes a little difficult. Um, and it's a responsibility that I have um, in some ways, but also in some ways, it's not my job to get you up to speed. No. Um, so it's kind of finding that fine balance of it um, in terms of going to a lot of new people. I'm their first representation of drag. They've never seen drag in a lot of ways, mm, like a lot of people haven't. Good point. And so I just have to kind of, I get both sides. The reception is both, but uh, you, you take it the good with the bad, I guess, sometimes and, and just hope for the best and hope people understand what you're doing. That's Absolutely. so cool. So first yeah. of all, like, um, a couple questions, pretty quick questions, actually. First of all, are you in Toronto? I am in Toronto. Okay. Yeah. That was my first question. I figured that. <laughs> Second question, um, how long have you been Alistar? How long... When did this all start? Yeah, so um, I would have started this technically in 2019. Um, and I got uh, a few matches in and then the pandemic happened pretty soon after. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I, everybody's plans, of course, I, I don't have to say it, everybody's plans got put on hold. So uh, it was really interesting. Like I'm not training, I'm not doing anything. And the only thing I could do in that time was focus on what I wanted to do moving forward, really set out a plan of how am I going to tackle what I want to accomplish. And so, um, yeah, starting, you know, becoming Alice, maybe it was 2019, but it's still so new to me and it's still evolving so much. Mm -hmm. That is quite the time to come into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Especially being so, so excited about being like, yeah, I'm going to do something so fun. I'm, I'm combining things that I really love. And then... Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so yeah. were you performing in drag prior to doing drag in the wrestling field or this is all? No. My, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, so yeah. That's so what I find really interesting too. Now I, I have wrestled outside of drag. That's, that's something that I've done. Um, you know, sometimes you are, are forced to do things to help out a show. Like, uh, you know, maybe you're going to wrestle someone that, uh, I don't know you weren't planning to wrestle or something, or maybe they ask you to uh, bring out a character that, that people uh, really love, but the person that normally doesn't do it there, you know, masks are a great thing. So I've wrestled a lot. Um, yeah. And as, as my out of drag self, uh, but in drag, it was totally new and I didn't do it beforehand. It was learning two things at once. Wow. Yeah. It's just like, I, so fascinating because I'm just like, what did you do before this? Is this a full time yeah. gig? Are you doing? Because it sounds like you said you're training like like five days a week yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So so, so I do have a <laughs> I, I have an, I, an everyday normal job. I'm a uh, yeah okay. I'm in marketing. Yeah. Me so, too. Uh, oh, amazing. We'll have to <laughs> we'll chat offline about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so for for me, uh, that's actually really helped me in developing a character, developing a brand. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's it's not my full time gig, but I do it as much as I can, given the restrictions that we have. You know, it's it's really difficult to go out and, and wrestle 
because shows have just started to pick up again and then who knows what's happening in the future mm-hmm. so it's just about adjusting and moving on the fly but yes. yeah it's uh it's 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 definitely been interesting during this time and uh i would love to you know do this absolutely full time um yeah. it's things yeah. that i love for sure yeah but also what i think about is that even if it might be a corporate cause pride could be a very accessible segue to say hey you want to add something kind of new to the pride community to these events this is a perfect alternative event a fringe event that would be different from going to a film mm-hmm. festival it would be different than going to blah 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 you know and then eventually maybe yeah I'm sure there'd be a documentary about Alice Star and that would be again so well you start to build all those things <laughs> yeah those are all good points and um all I can say to both of those in terms of pride event and documentary is I would love to do it and we'll see what 2020 has in, in store um 2022 I, 2022 that's it do you know oh i did gosh. that okay it's funny alice because i did that today i was writing down something and i'm like i feel like we are stuck in 2020 and i think that yeah we'll talk about mental health in a bit but that's like... yeah yeah 2022 yeah i mean everybody's hoping it's a better year who knows um <sighs> there was a, there were a lot of plans that i had that were cut short and, and as I mentioned, everybody else, uh, but kind of on the subject of the things you just, you just mentioned, um, mm-hmm. yes, would love to get those off the ground and they are actively being spoken about. Nice. So I had a scoop if you want to call it, I don't know. Yeah. 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 I was like becoming, becoming Alice here. I think Hero or you said that that is such a, that's a, yeah. that's a pretty great, potential yeah. name I don't know why I'm doing this but you know <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um yeah 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 but I would <laughs> yeah I mean just to, to kind of bookend that like I would I would absolutely love to do um a pride wrestling event in in Toronto say uh for next year um because there's so many LGBTQ wrestlers um yeah. that uh you know that are are successful and some that are just breaking out now and yeah. I think it would really drag and wrestling are the same thing their performance art it's yeah. storytelling when you boil it all down um and so i really think we could do a fun show that celebrates pride celebrates wrestling drag and just it's an amazing time for everybody i love it we'll come in yeah. as, the, as the kosher jewish duo, <laughs> yes, juicy duo. yeah um, yeah so funny and speaking of i just went like this what do you do to prepare how is your what what is your um your training look like for something like this yeah um so the drag side or the wrestling side the wrestling side because i like we're, we're both at, like we, we didn't really i know you, you don't know a lot about us necessarily but we both um are yoga teachers heroes more oh awesome in the like actively teaching i'm not really teaching as much anymore i love yeah. like we have this, something called 30 minute hit i love boxing kickboxing oh awesome um, yeah boxing uh, is amazing yeah and all that kind of stuff so yeah i'm just i'm curious about that the physical side of things yeah i mean it's really tough um i come home with bruises and welts and everything almost every single uh, training session wow. and uh so so wrestling you know what we do in there is real uh as I mentioned, people often like to use the word fake. It's, it's definitely not fake. Like, um, mm-hmm. there's nothing, the, the, the ring ropes, people think they're, I don't know what they think they are, but it's steel cable wrapped in tape. Oh, wow. You know, so oh. like you bounce off those, you've got welts on your back. It doesn't matter if you've done it 20 years or 10 years, or it's your first time Wow. you can get those welts. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're, if someone throws you into the corner and they come charging at you, when you got a 350 pound man or woman or, you know, whoever running at you and splashing into you, there's nothing fake about that. Wow. That freaking hurts, right? <laughs> uh, so, so there's a lot of things that you need to do in order to get prepared for wrestling. One of them is just getting good cardio shape. You know, that it, it, one of the biggest things is wrestling is so tiring. It doesn't matter. Yeah, like you can be in really great ring shape and it helps. Um, but if you're not, then like you're in trouble about 30 seconds Uh, in you're gassed you don't know what to do you're gonna you know forget what type of moves you want to do against this person you're gonna forget everything um uh, your your entire strategy but the thing is is that you also have to have a 
a, a, a knowledge in a lot of other fighting styles. So that whether that be boxing, mm. jujitsu, Muay yes. Thai, anything like that, because we live in a world now where everybody watches, not everybody, but you know, a lot of wrestling fans watch UFC. They watch all of right. those mixed martial arts. And so if you are not applying those types of holds the way they are meant to, to be done, people see through you. People see that you're, you're a hack. They see that you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And wrestling, you want to suspend disbelief. And so if you're not suspending disbelief through the moves that you're doing, then you have nothing. So right. I've, as I mentioned, yeah, boxing, uh, judo, a whole bunch of things uh, because you need to know how to fight. And then on yeah. top of that, uh, kind of piggybacking on the cardio, you need to be in shape. You oh, need to, uh, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm in the gym on top of training five to six days a week. Oh my gosh, geez. Wow. Now, uh, for typically two hours. Wow. So wow. yeah, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and that's not even including the travel to where you're wrestling, everything else. Well, and then the other thing, like I, I, I shouldn't just assume anything, but were you a big glow fan of the, it's, the series? it's funny you say that because I've actually never seen it. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. But yeah. what, I, what I think I, what I love that I hope that it's done for the wrestling community world is it has made it be like this is fucking hard like this is hard yeah. work like they they didn't really yeah. sh they didn't sugarcoat it which is what i love and with you know the, the strong powerful women and just like the the and also the actress or the actors that were in that and yeah. then talking yeah. about like how difficult it really was and how um much how physical it was it's it's cool and i think mm -hmm. that you know hopefully that kind of maybe that show i don't know opens the eyes i think it did yeah, I think there were there were a lot of people that um, that had never watched wrestling that watched that show and uh, grew, grew a new appreciation for wrestling. Right. And uh, and I think that's incredibly uh, I don't know inspiring and and at the same time um, it, it pushes me forward because the more people that understand wrestling, the more people that understand drag, um, one the better my career will be, yes. and two the more uh, exactly you know what I'm trying to do is going to come across to a lot of people. Um, uh, so I'm just yeah. excited that these types of things are becoming more mainstream, more so drag than wrestling. Uh, yes. But wrestling still at this time is, it's actually having a boom. Uh, we're seeing a lot of different companies um, uh, really gain success even through the pandemic. AEW is a big one. Uh, WWE of course is, is the staple, but for years they haven't had any competition. And now finally they have competition. And so it just shows you that wrestling is growing again, just like it was in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Wow. And yeah. like, and sir, I keep jumping in here, Hero, do you have a question? <laughs> oh, I've got many. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 um, we'll go, I know, rapid yeah, fire. Exactly. You go, you go, well, go ahead, I, go ahead. What I was, well, I kind of mentioned this before you popped on and I'm sure it's crossed your mind because it's so mainstream, but even you getting connected to like uh, Brooklyn Heights, like uh, Canada's Drag yeah. Race and um, even One Queen, Five Queers, like the rebirth of One yeah. Girl, Five Gays, like that's perfect media, mainstream media in Toronto. That would be such an easy new way of diversifying the culture of drag. You know, you could come For in sure. and do a maxi challenge and it could be challenging the queens to have their own persona and you could be like the referee like how perfect would that be or beyond the show even beyond the show and maybe you already have I which think, would be fantastic yeah, you, could have right? your own show. you could have your own production of <laughs> it, 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 drag it, wrestling it, it, reality it, it, show yeah honestly um <laughs> i uh i actually have a, a background in in television i hosted oh. and produced a show for I think it was three or four years. Wow. Um, so, so television is a medium that I absolutely love. Like I love TV since I was a kid. I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed today. Yeah. I like any chance I get, I sit in front of the TV. Music is a big one too, but yeah, but TV. Um, so to, to have a show or, or continue to be on TV would be absolutely just amazing. Okay. You totally okay. will. Wait, I'm rewinding. I don't know if this is rewind. This is like fishing. What the hell is this? Whatever. <laughs> You're really um, in. I'm really it's a, in. It's a movement. It's yeah. a movement. It's a movement. That's your this wrestling like movie. Move. No, because this is, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway. The wrestling moves are charades. <laughs> I want to rewind to what you said because because we always like to kind of dive a bit deeper into really where the how you got to where you are. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, 
what show were you on? First of all, is it Canadian known? Is it? No. So it was, okay. uh, it was like a, like a, a local Roger show that was, that was broadcast kind of throughout Ontario. In, okay. in, yeah. I don't know if you have a international uh, uh, viewers, but uh, Ontario is, yeah. Okay. Like in the province. So it yeah. was kind of uh, dispersed all throughout uh, and it was video game themed. I'm, <gasps> I'm such a gamer. Game yeah. Are you? <laughs> That's I'm amazing. a huge gamer. Do you see my sweater? No, I, I can't see it. It hasn't switched over yet. Hasn't switched I, over yet? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> Where'd you get that? I got it from Nintendo World in um in um in New York? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Uh-huh. That's such oh a cool God. store too. Yes, it is. I love it. I love that you're a gamer. That's amazing. And then Yeah taking it still in the direction of yourself and with mental health. I mean, there's also, Rachel might know a little bit about this too. Like there are so many, there are quite a lot of wrestling video games that have come up through the yeah. ages. Like even like at the N64 generation. Some great, like some WWE, really bad. You know, and also like, um, what's the other one? Um, like punch out. Like w- it, yeah, punch like out, punch out. Yeah, boxing, but yeah. Yeah, boxing, yeah. But in the sense of like in a ring and stuff and culturally mainstreaming some kind of sport and athletic activity, I mean, like, it's this, I just got, like, this yeah. whole, like, surge of, like, the emoji with the head, it's, like, the brain's exploding. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Rachel, back to you. Huh? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're totally no. right, this, though, yeah. I know, this is, this is awesome. I love, there's a lot of, like, common ground here, which is amazing. Okay, I, so, how, how about I just list everything that I love? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll probably talk about it all. Yes. Well, Greg, wrestling video games, music. I also toured in a rock and roll band for four years uh, across North America. This all sounds like like lies. These all sound like lies, but they're true. No. Yes. Um, they all sound real. They sound uh, real. Music oh, yeah. is a huge thing. And honestly, I love to make music. That's Alistar. Um, that's another thing. Now, obviously with everything that's going on, it's difficult to get it all working and all at the same time. Uh, but when it comes to music, like, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm still writing and recording music and, yes. and at one point would love to put out music um, you are, you and are, be it, be Alistar. Yeah. You have you like, are a rock star. No, no you, are, you, are, <laughs> you are creative. Like that is your thing. Like it you're sounds a like you're totally. And so where did that all start? Like, it sounds like you've like how to, or, or, well, first of all, do you sing or was it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I love singing. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think that I'm good. Uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> ask people often. Um, but uh, yeah, so growing up, I started playing guitar when I was 10. Nice. And so it was pretty early on. My parents did not play anything, but we did have music in the house. I remember okay. trying to, to uh, you know, when I was a young, young kid, uh, my parents would play certain songs, either get me to sleep or I liked them. I never really asked, but Lenny Kravitz, are you going to go my way? collective soul these types of things um that they were probably just listening to at the time and then it it, it seeped into my brain uh queen these types of things and so uh as i got more and more into music then i started playing and it's kind of in my blood my brother plays as well um my grandmother was uh an organ player with the church my grandfather played guitar um and then i have like a second cousin was a rapper And even (laughs) dating back to both sides of my family, um, we have members in vaudeville, um, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with vaudeville. My, I grew up with, I grew up with musical theater parents. There you go. I know. Yeah. There's a lot of, yeah. Yeah. I know. That's really cool. For sure. Yeah. 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 For anybody watching that hasn't heard of vaudeville, one, you can look it up, but two, essentially like a traveling sideshow act circus it kind of had everything like actors it had uh musicians uh my great i don't know if it's great grandfather great great grandfather was a a juggler so we actually still have his juggling sticks and his uh and uh some posters as well um and then on the other side a violinist so so performing has kind of always been in my family uh in some way or, or another Wow. And then, so, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, continue. Go ahead. Yeah. There's, well, there's just a few things I was hearing there. Like, <laughs> I, I heard church, 
Yeah. And oh, I yeah. heard, uh, and I guess I'm wondering, like, did you grow up in a small town? Did you grow up in a, like, where did you grow up in? I grew up in a, in a, in a, a town called Whitby, which is uh, about 40 minutes okay. from Toronto. Okay. Whitby, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. I know so Whitby, yeah. growing up there, it wasn't particularly small, you know, a hundred thousand people or so. Okay. So uh, I really did live in the, what you would consider like the most like stereotypical uh, suburb. You know, it, it, I went to, the high school was pretty decent. Yeah. Um, it was, I don't know, clean. <laughs> I don't know if that's the stereotypical <laughs> suburbs, but honestly, yeah. like when you picture suburbs, it was basically that. Okay. Um, and I've always wanted to break out of there. Um, but uh, now that, you know, I, I got a little older and then you start exploring different things and, and your interests, um, I definitely moved to Toronto and this is where I'm at right now. Uh, so didn't particularly grow up from a small town, but smaller than where I'm living. Yeah, I guess I just wondered like if it was, um, like if you ever found that it was stuffy or that you, was there ever a time that you felt like you couldn't be you or yourself or how do you feel like? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, not particularly to do with anything um, that a lot of people would assume as a drag queen wrestler. Um, but more so just feeling like a general outsider because I've always loved things that are a little kooky, a little weird. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was the type of person that had friends in each group, but maybe only one friend in each group. So I kind of traveled between people because I'd find friends that were similar to me or that I could get along with. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't really deal with too much stuffiness outside of what people normally have. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it wasn't abnormal for me that I definitely got bullied. I definitely had all of that kind of normal stuff. Um, maybe, maybe more so than a little bit now that I think about it, because, <laughs> <laughs> because I was into just kind of weirder things. Um, and I was just a little more this than people, yeah. you know, um, my high school was very much so like, uh, out of a, out of a, a, an American movie. You know, football team and this and that and the jocks and blah, blah blah and I just I wasn't that you know I was just a weirdo mm -hmm. yeah no and I but feel I found like my group that's awesome and I feel like that's kind of more accepted now than it maybe was yeah that yeah it doesn't matter sure. if you're in a really small town or if you're not in a really small town mm -hmm. and you know we talk we do talk a lot about like you know really where our guests maybe the trials and not just trials and tribulations but you know what made them who they are today and we again I mentioned to you we do do touch on a little bit on mental health so yeah I don't know if that's something that you're comfortable talking with if you 100 percent, yeah yeah so I mean I I guess I just wonder in your journey were there things that you had to you know overcome and in, in order to I'm sure I mean, everyone's journey there's things they have to overcome to get where they are no <laughs> yeah yeah no I definitely understand what you're saying yeah for for me um things kind of get worse as I got older um, it wasn't uh, something that I really, mental health wasn't something that was really on my radar as, as a child, even really in high school. Uh, it wasn't until I graduated high school that I started noticing certain things that maybe just weren't quite right. And I don't, I wouldn't particularly know why, you know, I, I, I've always had a, a pretty comfortable life. Everybody has things that they go through, you know, financially, whatever it may be, uh, relationship or, or work or whatever it may be. Um, but I found as I got older, those things hit me harder whenever I did hit roadblocks. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to kind of come to the realization uh, that I, I needed to talk to someone. And then even when I did, it took me three years maybe before I went and talked to someone. It wasn't until kind of hitting a point where I went, ooh, this, is, this isn't good. Um, thankfully, I never got to the, the, the side of, you know, any sort of suicidal thoughts. But, you know, at the same time, uh, you never know where things are going to go. And it just, yeah, I hit a breaking point. And I thought I need to go talk to someone. And so since then, I, I have been uh, on uh, depression and, and anxiety medication. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, we're still trying to find the balance. Um, and I think that's the struggle that a lot of people go through is first admitting it and then going to see someone. And then there's a whole stage of figuring it out. Oh um, and it's different for everybody. Yeah. Well, and the other, and the other thing is it doesn't necessarily mean, cause I, I have a sort of similar story where it's not like 
you know, life was pretty good. Like no, there wasn't necessarily, and I, I know you didn't really elaborate or maybe there was a catalyst or something, but for me personally, there wasn't, there doesn't necessarily have to be a catalyst yeah. or some big event that just like throws you. Like for me, it, it, it was similar to you. It was kind of like getting a bit older and just some of these feelings or things I had just kind of kept getting worse and worse, but not really identifying what they really were until they were pretty bad. But again, yeah, it wasn't yeah. one big event. And I think that some people think with mental health or, um, I hate using the word illness, but, um, challenges, mental health challenges sure. is that, uh, there has to be some significant event or it's like some trauma or something that something yeah. big that's happened, but, in reality, I mean, the things that happen to us over the years, sometimes they, as they start to live and grow in your body, it can happen very slowly, especially if you never were given any tools or know, mm -hmm. or know that that just like a, your muscles, this, your yeah. brain's a muscle and mental health mm -hmm. is something that also has to be worked on props. I would hope since you're little, but unfortunately we didn't have that. I didn't have that. No, you're right. So, you're totally right. And yeah. you know, even for my family, I had a completely loving family and I was comfortable. We had everything that we needed and I'm super appreciative. And, and my family is still, um, uh, is there for me and, and they're awesome. Um, the one thing, and it's not their fault, but I think it's more generational thing is that, yeah, those things just weren't talked about within the family, especially if there is a history, you know, in, in the family, uh, with mental, uh, health problems. Yep. And so, you know, I know for me moving forward with, with my children, that's something that I will pass on for sure, because this, this stigmatization of it is, is kind of changing, I think, uh, for the better. Um, and I, I want to be a part of that for sure. And that's why I try to be as open as possible about these discussions, because it's so important. Yeah. Thank you so much for being open. Yeah. About that too. Do you have kids right now? I don't, but I have okay. one on the way. <gasps> ah, that's yeah. awesome. Please. Congratulations. My first, yeah, my first child. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. And, yeah. and are you raising that's it on your own? Are you raising with a partner or? No, I have a partner. Yeah. And uh, the baby's due in, in June. So uh, wow. hopefully everything is better uh, by then yeah. and, and we can enjoy the outside a little bit and not be too afraid of, of COVID and everything else, but that's the, the hand we were dealt. Oh my gosh. Well, wow. I know, I know lots of, of babes that have been born through yeah. the pandemic. And I wonder if it's like, yeah. I wonder if it's like a, a second baby boom, you know, like, uh, cause everybody's <laughs> inside and then, you know, yeah. at least to, to one thing or another. It's true. It is any, any kind of new life boom whether if it's um, human or if it's uh, other animal race, there's definitely been that. Yeah. Or even like plants, you know, people getting involved in that or oh, everybody physical health, whatever it is, there's something going on with people adopting and starting new lives and having babies is definitely part of it for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, oh my goodness. So June, okay, well that's, June. at least June in Toronto is not stuck in, minus whatever weather <laughs> no 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 no. june should be good june should be like 20s yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah that's awesome that's good and what is is it snowing there right now because we've had a lot of snow it's uh it's but, it's it's on the ground yeah. but uh it, yeah uh, it, it's it's been snowing on and off um i am i'm a baby in the winter i hate the winter i want to hibernate you're the same absolutely yeah. the same i'm yeah. a summer I, I don't even yeah. want to go outside once uh, mm -hmm. so I yeah. forced myself, I forced myself because I'm still like, I, and, and especially just back to the mental health topic for a sec, like with mental health. And I wonder like, does, um, exercise, it sounds so simple, but yes, it does help, you know, that yeah. exercise helps. And so, and fresh air. And so I need to get yeah. like, even though there might be snow on the ground, I'm like, okay, Rachel, just bundle up, you know, you need some fresh air and that's just gonna, you know, yeah, help for sure. a little bit there, but have you noticed that with your physical stuff that you do, does that help with your mental health as well? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, it's difficult because I'm really, part of it is that I'm really hard on myself. And, you know, we talked about all the things that I've done and I'm always like, oh, I could have done it a little bit better. Or if I only did this, I, you know, and I'm that type of person. And when I do have those thoughts, um, the way it kind of manifests is that it, I just keep it internally. And then it, it that kind of uh, affects me in my, you know, depression or anxiety. 
And then when I get depressed about something, then I have anxiety about doing it and actually yeah. getting it started. So being physical was, there was a time that actually that, that was, it felt like it was hurting me. And that, that was because like, I was on a good track when the pandemic started really being physically active and I was feeling good. I don't like going to the gym. Anybody that says they like going to the gym, I'm not <laughs> going to call them a liar, but you know, it's just, it's, I do it, but I don't like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so um, I was in good shape and then pandemic happened. I thought that's fine. I'll figure it out. Got some resistance bands, ran outside, did whatever I could. Um, and then I got injured. Um, I did something to my shoulder and then there was this big long period where I wasn't active and that was really um, making my depression flare up, but my anxiety flared up thinking about getting back into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there was this, this lull of, of this really challenging time dealing with everything. And then at the same time, dealing with my physical health. And so yeah. um, now that I'm on track and, and now that that's kind of in the past and I, I'm really active and I'm making sure I eat well. And I'm, like I said, in the gym five times, six times a week. Um, I really do find that helps me a lot. Yeah. That's awesome. And I, again, I keep cannibalizing the conversation of questions. So hero, hero, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, again, I feel like a broken record. Like this is kind of our dynamic. When one of us gets on a roll, we let them go on a roll. It's important to have that. <laughs> hey, I like it. <laughs> That's great. And also what I want to also acknowledge before uh, we're not done, close to wrapping up quite yet, but I want to acknowledge that it's really great that you um, and Rachel connected because I'm really happy that we have you on the podcast because we definitely stand for diversity. We stand for connection. We stand for mental health and also being a gay male myself. Um, it's important that we have that connectivity for the mental health community and in the lens of the queer community too. Uh, yeah. I think in the last couple of years, we've had a lot of places that have gotten their voice heard. There's a lot more people that have had the connection that's different and it's important to have that support to represent other communities in the realm of drag, in the realm of yeah. performance artistry, in the realm of athletics, you know? And so to yeah. put these two things together and then with mental health, I think there's something really fantastic about that. So I just want to commend you for the work you are doing. Yeah, thank you. Um, for the thank work you, you so continue much. to do. Yeah, and it's really important. And so leading up with that um, comment is, where do you want to see yourself? Like, if you think about it, you talk about your past and then moving to Toronto, looking at being into being in parenthood and things in that way. Um, what are some of the things that you want to hopefully see for yourself in the next year? Um, in addition to things you might have already expressed? Yeah, um, that's a great question um, because it's so hard to answer uh, because it's everything is uncertain. Um, the plans that I had for 2020, 2021, some of them haven't happened yet because it's just not possible. So there's a lot on the back burner that I have been developing, uh, whether it be, you know, maybe a TV show or an event or whatever it may be um, that I would absolutely love to get off the ground in, in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm checking a lot of boxes uh, for myself. And I think that's really important for everybody, especially during this time, is to have a set list of goals. And despite having the, you know, a pandemic happening, still trying to achieve everything that's within realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, the number one thing is uh, above drag, wrestling, anything else that I love, as you said, being a parent, that's, that's the number one thing. That's, that's what I'm most looking forward to. Um, but at the same time, I'm just looking to use this year to evolve and get myself out there in a way that I can really tell new stories, uh, whether it be through drag or wrestling or both, and really showcase the importance of doing things your way mm -hmm. and being honest about what you do because there's nothing dishonest about this you know there's nothing when I go in you know people this is dress up I'm playing dress up right now but guess what Alice is is still me like Alice is just as much me as you know when I'm out of drag yeah and I want to make sure that I use this year in everything that I do to let people know that yeah 
I love that's, that. They have that ability too, whether it's wrestling, whether it's um, something else. I don't know. That you, don't be afraid to be, uh, you know, to break new ground. That's so yeah. beautifully said because you're right. Like there's there's so many things that have been put on the back burner too since the beginning of this whole pandemic or put on hold and then and then taken off hold and then put back on hold again and taken off hold. It's like you know, I, I truly believe there was more than one way to, you know, um, to accomplish your goals as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and we're at Very every, true. right. And we're, and every day we're finding, you know, new, new ways of doing that. I mean, look at how popular zoom has become like those, <laughs> any, those just all those little things. Um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's bloody hard. Yeah. Like, you know, for example, today, um, in BC, we just, got some more news about uh all the gyms and everything are shutting down again yeah. it's like what the fuck yeah. so i mean it's you know and i it's i feel so bad for those those owners of those businesses because for them yeah okay it is going to be harder to kind of um you know find a different way of doing things absolutely yeah um, yeah for sure but it's unfortunately like i guess i guess we all thought it was going to be over quickly it's not um so it's just like anything in life you don't really know what the outcome is going to be and it's yeah. just doing what you can while you got the time now and how I guess is the real question <laughs> yeah I mean I think you're 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 exactly right um especially about being able to adapt because yeah this, <laughs> I was I was in the boat of being like oh it'll be like four weeks maybe and we're good and we'll get out of it and here we are two years or whatever later yeah, with really no end in sight. Um, I think a lot of people have used this opportunity to uh, to to gain a new perspective on things. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I know myself included. Yeah, like for me, I now I I really appreciate. I always appreciated my friends, but appreciate them even more. My family, going to the movies, doing the little things. It sounds yeah. so first world. Um, but that is where we live. You know, these are the things that we are, we are used to, and now we're adapting, which is beautiful in itself that we're able to adapt and move forward. Um, but at the same time, like if you're not doing that, uh, that's when those mental health struggles, I think will really kick in. Um, mm -hmm. And people have, have had a hard time adapting and changing the goalposts a little bit being like, okay, mm -hmm. Or changing their path, be like, okay, yeah, no, I knew I needed to go this way. Well, guess what? You can't anymore. So yeah. how are you going to do it? Yeah. And that in itself is going to be very difficult or has been difficult for a lot of people, myself yeah. included in some ways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think that a lot of people that do have mental health challenges, I mean, for the most part, anxiety is, or I'll just speak for myself, is like the anxiety of the unknown and, and really enjoying and needing some routine. And there hasn't really been a lot of that in the past couple of years. So, you know, not only is it um, creating new, maybe mental health challenges for people, but the people that have had those challenges prior to, it's yeah. been that much more difficult, but you're right. Like not, not everyone, there, there is a, a lot to be like, there's a muscle of needing to adapt or having to adapt. And that's not innate in everybody for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's much more yeah. challenging for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. it's just nice to have you on and, and, being like, no, no, you know, I've had to do this a number of times and I'm still doing yeah. it and you can. So yeah, it almost feels like a, a lot of false starts for people. Yep. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. What, one thing that comes to my mind that I want to ask you before, um, cause we are getting close to the end of the hour, which is, I can't believe that. It's zooming amazing. by. I know it's it literally zooming by. Yeah. We want, I would love to know who some of your, um, if you have any, some of your influences or role models are both in yeah. and out of your industries and interests and otherwise. Yeah, I, I love answering that question because I love talking about people that have inspired me. Um, number one, I think would probably be Elton John. Absolute uh, massive Elton John fan. I actually have tickets, fingers crossed we can do it. I have tickets to go see him at his final US show in Los Angeles uh, next November at Dodger Stadium. I'm so excited oh. because it's the first time he's played there in like whatever it's been, uh, almost 50 years, uh, 
yeah, by the time the concert happens, it'll be close to 50 years. And that's like his pivotal moment, him playing Dodger Stadium with this like bedazzled <laughs> outfit on and everything. Um, mm. So Elton John is, is, is one of my main influences, musically, uh, visually. Uh, I just think he's an absolute wonderful human being in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, I think on a, a daily basis, he inspires me. I have no clue what I'm going to do when he, when he passes. Like, I'm going to have to take time off work. I'm going to have to do all of that. Um, <laughs> I love, love Elton John. Uh, but outside that, yeah, there's, there's, I have a lot of influences and they're all kind of like within their own realm. Um, when it comes to wrestling, uh, I love, my favorite wrestler of all time is Bret Hart, Bret the Hitman Hart, who's Canadian uh, from Calgary. Um, so he was a, a big wrestler in the nineties and, uh, he became world champion for WWE or WWF at the time. Um, and he was actually just inducted to the Canadian walk of fame, like last week oh. or something, which oh, is wow. long overdue. Uh, so Bret Hart is another one, uh, mostly just because of his, his general attitude and how he approached things. He could not be any more different than Elton John. Uh, Elton John is flamboyant, <laughs> loud, you know is 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 the star of the show whereas bret hart is very when it comes to wrestling he's a technical person he's quiet he just guess what he needs to get done and uh so those are also like two big sides of me and that's why i draw inspiration from that is because i like to take things seriously but also at the same time you can't take yourself too seriously take what you do seriously don't take yourself seriously mm -hmm. Um, freaking men to that that is yeah i like that yeah i mean um, I'm, I'm a yeah i'm a dude in a wig and makeup like let's let's get real it's kind of funny <laughs> you know like there are people yeah. that it's it, that is their 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 life and and that's awesome um for me this doesn't define me but this is part of me yeah yeah and uh so, so at the same time you just kind of have to be you you have to see the humor in in life and, and the things that you do <laughs> Absolutely. freaking lutely Now, is yeah. one of your other influences, is that Pee Wee Herman behind you? Oh my gosh. Thank you for asking. We didn't even set because... this up. Yeah. I, so I have a lot of Pee Wee Herman stuff in my apartment. Um, I have a, this one up here. Uh, let's see, the camera's going to be dumb. Um, oh, I could... But that yeah, one up there, the you can kind of see it. So that one over yeah. there, that is a, a commission um, from a guy named Dan Parent. And Dan Parent was... Um, actually the person who created Kevin Keller, the first um, gay Archie character. Oh. And so he drew and wrote, he still does for, for Archie, draws and writes for, for Archie. Huh. And so I asked him to do a personalized commission, his camera, really, let's figure this out. Okay. Uh, so this, 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 um, this, uh, now I lost my train of thought. This, image this this picture was uh was drawn by him and so it's it's peewee herman as an archie character oh cool it was my oh. request yeah nice i love that i was okay i was gonna say because okay i'm from the generation like and i've aged myself a million times on this show so i don't mind doing it again i i'm 39 really? in, Jan in january shut up I, i'm 39 Damn in january you're so, old. so <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> But with that being said, like I'm a, like I grew up with with Pee Wee's Playhouse, like that was yeah. my in the '80s, yeah. that was my thing, and like it's super weird for kids now because it's weird, it's a bit odd. It's super weird. It's super weird, but I love Paul Rubens, like love him. So it's I love that you love him because I also love him, and I my husband knows that so much so that a few years ago he bought me tickets to a comedy show in Vancouver where Pee Wee was the host in Vancouver but but he got sick and had to cancel the show okay I don't know what and it I is was about Paru. so I'm sorry say that again no I no, I don't want you to finish the story but I I can keep going on Paul Rubens after just yeah so uh, we could talk about this offline too but I was so distraught because I'm like I never thought in a million years that I'd ever see him live and yeah. specifically as Pee Wee in a small theater in my hometown yeah and it yeah. is so, so rare was, yeah yeah but it didn't happen yeah it didn't that's, happen. A, that's, wah, that's wah, wah. I'm so sad for you uh <laughs> I've tried two times to, to meet Paul Rubens the first time 
was at Fan Expo here in Toronto and yeah. he canceled for that, which uh, it always blows my mind because he said prior commitment. It's like, what's your commitment? You you were booked here. <laughs> I always, the, oh, the, those comic conventions are always that way. Um, and then I bought tickets to see him in Michigan. He was doing a 35th anniversary of, of Big Adventure, which I have uh, an original pressing poster on my wall right beside me. Um, and so uh, uh, Paul Rubens was there with a bunch of the cast members and they screened the, they were screening the movie. And then there was a Q&A afterwards and I bought like meet and greet tickets to go like meet Paul Rubens, do all this yeah. kind of stuff. And then it just, pandemic happened. So both oh. times that I meant to, I, I tried to meet Paul Rubens, it didn't work out. And now I'm hearing from you and you're saying the same thing. So I don't know, That's maybe so nobody true. was ever destined to meet him. No, you know what? Maybe mm. we were destined to meet him together. We were just together. Meeting. Yeah. We were just, oh my yeah. gosh. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, I also oh feel my... like I can bond with you. So, well, both of you, but because nobody likes Pee Wee except me, like not even just like, <laughs> it's not that they hate Pee Wee. It's just that they, I don't know. They're like Pee Wee Herman if they know who he is. And then most of the time they're like, who's Pee Wee Herman? So. I yeah. a, I understand I, people that they're like, they think I'm very strange that I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, okay, this is so kind of off topic, but it's still on topic. But there was a scene from one of his, because he hasn't done a movie in many years, but one of the more recent PB movies. 2016. It's the, dumbest, it's the dumbest fucking scene. It's like, he's got one of those balloons and he's just sque he's oh, squeezing the balloon. Where, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. And I seriously was pissing myself laughing so hard. It's so dumb. And I said that to my sister because my sister also has weird humor and we were just pissing ourselves, yeah. but no one else gets it. Like, it's just so stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's so stupid. Pee -wee but anyway, is an acquired taste. He's definitely sure. an acquired taste. And you know what? This, this leads us to probably one of our final questions, which is always super supremely goofy. And I didn't yeah. really know what to ask, but now I think I do. So what's juicier, Pee Wee, Herman, or Paul Rubens and you can take that as you will like what is hmm. juicier like I don't know what that even means whatever it means to you okay okay <laughs> that's a that's an interesting question because Paul Rubens he's synonymous with Pee Wee Herman but he actually has had a lot of awesome roles yes he has so you know he's in uh my partner's favorite movie Matilda um oh God. Okay. Yeah, he plays like a, a like a special agent police officer. I don't um, know. Yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, oh. he's, he's he's not in it super long. Uh, maybe only a few scenes. Um, he's a mystery man. He was in the movie. Yes. Uh, I mean, now that I think about, Pee Wee Herman is definitely juicier because there's so many sides to that character. First of all, he was in Cheech and Chong. Like Pee Wee Herman is in yeah, Cheech yeah. and Chong movie. Yeah. Um, and then the kids show, and then. The, all the movies and the characters live show uh, the HBO special or the, the first one early on like yeah that's kind of raunchy actually now that I think about it and <laughs> if you watch Pee Wee's Playhouse there are so many scenes where Miss Yvonne is like I don't know it's very like this subtle sexuality to it um <laughs> she's always got her like her boobs up and like pressed up in this push-up bra she's got this huge hair and then there's one time when she's riding like a mechanical bull or something oh my and she's, god like, screaming and like it, we all know what they were doing when they filmed that right they were all laughing in the back um so i mean based on that alone i think Herman right is juicier uh, i would have to say that's there's, fantastic there's no right or wrong answer i there's no right or wrong answer but the, I think the one role that I loved to, like, it was so such a stupid role was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Buffy, yeah. 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 <laughs> what did he do? What did he do with Buffy? He was like the, the he was a evil, vampire. yeah, he was a vampire, but it's his death scene is just so stupid. In the ridiculous. movie, right? He was in the yes. movie, not the show. Yeah. The movie. I don't think he ever appeared in the show. But... I don't think so. And I should have clarified, yes, the movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, Alice, it's been so incredible to have you and we are so glad that we could connect and get to know a little bit about who you are, what you are doing, and we would love to keep in touch. Um, I followed you on uh, from my my own personal page, so definitely Amazing. keep in touch. Come to, If you come to BC, me and Rachel would love to see you. I connect. love BC. Come anytime, anytime you like, when it's safe to do so. And uh, Rachel King, I'm sure, gave us a nice tour in Vernon and through the Okanagan and through the wine states and all that stuff too. <laughs> throwing you, throw, throwing you on the on the on the pedestal there. 
Awesome. awesome. No, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate having me on. And uh, it's been awesome talking with you. Go ahead. I love it. And congratulations on Thanks the babe. Safe. And thank you. And the last thing, because I know we'll put it in the show notes, but how can people find you? Yeah, I mean, uh, the easiest one is on Instagram at official Alistar. Uh, that's two R's at the end to be fancy. Um, <laughs> And yeah, on, on Instagram, you'll find all my photos and uh, send me a DM. I, I like, I love talking to people and, and there's a lot of people that have reached out uh, over the last year even. Um, and I just, I love connecting with people and, and being able to, I don't know, just share stories and, uh, and kind of be there for everybody. Perfect. I love Fantastic. It. Well, we need more people like that. Oh. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. Thank you again so 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 very much and no, thank keep you. in touch and have a wonderful night i'm like what time is it there now seven o'clock <laughs> i don't know it's seven o'clock yeah there. I, I don't think know you just froze for a second. <laughs> have a good night thank you so much juicy